Hi class, welcome to this screencast on meiosis. So we just finished up learning about the cell cycle and mitosis and a lot of what we learned we're going to have to remember because it applies similarly to meiosis. So we now understand based on mitosis how our normal body cells are replenished for repair or when they're damaged, but how are our sperm and our egg created? So we're gonna look at a totally different process called meiosis, and meiosis creates sperm, and in females, it creates eggs. So let's take a look at how this happens. So the purpose of meiosis, and I have this in big, big letters because it's so important to remember throughout this lesson, is that it creates the sex cells, which we call gametes. And the two types of gametes are egg in females and sperm in males. Meiosis produces the egg and it produces the sperm. It does not produce the baby. It does not produce uh, the baby of the parents or, or did not produce you. It produces the egg and the sperm, which then come together to produce the baby. So when we think about this in terms of DNA, right, because we have to start with the cell and then it has to create this egg and this sperm because all cells have to come from cells. And the DNA has to be transmitted or transferred to these new cells. And you have to think about the amount of DNA. So if you're starting with a normal body cell, which has so much DNA, and you're going to transmit that to an, a, a gamete, to a sex cell, it actually has to contain half as much DNA. And the next slide that I'm going to show you is going to explain why that is. So we, we're creating egg and sperm. So where is this happening? It's happening in the sex organs. It's happening in the ovaries. It's happening in the testes. This is the only place in the human body where meiosis is occurring, in these sex organs to create egg and sperm. Just as a little side note, this process is happening continually in males once they pass puberty, but in females, it's actually already happened at least part of the way once females are born, which is very interesting. So this is a diagram of the human life cycle, and I'd like for you to draw this exactly in your notes and label all of the new vocabulary um, and, and write down the definitions as we go. So we're gonna start up here with adults. Now, this little 2N simply means that adults are diploid, which means they have a full set of DNA. So this just simply means a full set of DNA. And meiosis is going to occur in the sex organs, the ovaries and the testes, and it's going to create, like we just said, the egg and the sperm. Now the egg and the sperm have half as much DNA, so they are only N, and we call that haploid. So haploid means half as much DNA. So another purpose of meiosis is to not only create these sex cells, but to reduce the number, the chromosome number, to reduce that amount of DNA by half. So now that we have the egg and the sperm, they can then fertilize one another. And what happens when you add N plus N? You get 2N. So now you're back to the full set of DNA. This is called the zygote, which is just simply a fertilized egg. And then the zygote, like we just learned last lesson, undergoes mitosis to grow into a baby and then continues to undergo mitosis to grow into a human adult. So make sure you draw that in your notes. So let's start at the very beginning of the process of meiosis, and I'm going to take you step by step as we go. So just some general information about these um, these sex cells, these sex, I'm sorry, these, these ovarian cells or these testes cells. So these normal uh, body cells contain two sets of chromosomes. So one set came from the, the mom, one set came from your dad. Let's just pretend that we're talking about you here. Um, so this gives you a two, 2 times 23 chromosomes. So you've got 23 pairs of chromosome, which is a total of 46. Now what I'm showing you here is just seven. So I'm just, because it was hard for me to draw all of them, right? But I've got seven pairs of two, so this is a total of 14 chromosomes, but you can see the red came from mom, the blue came from dad. So you've got two whole sets of 23 for a total of 46 chromosomes. Again, this is diploid 2N because you've got two sets of chromosomes. You have a full set of chromosomes. Another term to be, to be aware of is autosomes. So 22 pairs of those chromosomes are called autosomes, which just uh, are going to make up what makes your body. Um, and then the last pair, the 23rd pair, that, those are sex chromosomes. So if you're female, then you are XX, and if you're male, you're XY. So 22 pairs are autosomes, one pair are sex chromosomes. So going back to the cell cycle, remember most of the time the cell is in interphase, which is just this sort of intermediate phase of getting ready to divide. And remember during interphase, what very, very important thing happens, 
during S phase, you are correct. The DNA is going to duplicate. So during S phase, remember, the DNA duplicates. So we go from having uh, a single chromosome to having two. So these are now absolutely identical to one another. And we call these guys sister chromatids. So they are totally identical. It's just a duplication event that had happened. But now we have a new name for this pair. So this is called a homologous pair of chromosomes. Again, a one from mom and one from dad. So they have the same type of information. So this, for example, is chromosome two. So they have the same, all the same type of information. But this exact allele or this exact gene might be slightly different in mom than in dad. My, my, mom might have a, a blue allele there and dad might have a brown allele there, save for eye color. So this is a pair of homologous chromosomes. So now I'm going to take you through all the steps of meiosis. They're very similar to mitosis, but meiosis actually is two phases. So first we're going to look at meiosis 1, which consists of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and cytokinesis, and then we'll look at meiosis 2. So first, prophase 1. Um, I'm just going to be showing just a, a very small portion of the actual complement of DNA here. So we're just going to look at one pair of homologous chromosomes, and something very important happens during prophase 1. During prophase 1, an event called crossing over occurs, and crossing over is going to exchange genetic material between the maternal chromosome and the paternal chromosome. So now this little uh, allele or alleles from the mom are now actually on the paternal chromosome and likewise for the paternal going on to the maternal. So this is really, really important in creating genetic variation. Okay, so that was prophase one. Then metaphase one comes next and the homologous chromosome. So now these pairs of chromosomes are lining up at the center. Remember we call that the metaphase plate. And as we go through all these, I just want you to remember that what we started with was six uh, chromosomes. So 6 was 2n, which was diploid. So we've got 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So another really important source of variation here is that these can line up in any fashion. So I'm showing blue, red, blue, and red, blue, red, but it could be all blue and all red or any combination thereof. And this is called the law of independent assortment. And again, this creates genetic variation. All right, next phase is anaphase one. So the homologous chromosomes are going to separate from one another. This is important to remember. It's the homologous chromosomes that are separating. The pairs are splitting apart. And as we go through, I'm just gonna show this and remind you that this was because of the crossing over event, that exchange of genetic material. So the homologous chromosomes are now separating from one another during anaphase one. Okay, now we're gonna finish up meiosis one with telophase one and cytokinesis. Again, very similar to mitosis. So we've got the new uh, cell membrane forming. We've got a new nuclear envelope forming, which I'm actually not showing here. And we now have two cells. So at the end of meiosis one, we have two cells. And as you can see, each only has three chromosomes. One, two, and three. So now n equals 3, so now already at the end of meiosis 1, we are haploid. We have reduced the chromosome number. That's why meiosis 1 is also called the reduction phase. Okay, so we're done. So now we're going to focus in and see what happens to these cells during the second phase of meiosis. So meiosis 2 still consists of the same uh, subphases. Now we just have a little 2 instead of a 1. Um, so prophase 1 or prophase 2, nothing too much is really happening. But now during metaphase 2, we've got the sister chromatids lining up, whereas before we had the homologous chromosomes lining up. Now we have the sister chromatids lining up at the metaphase plate. During anaphase 2, it is the sister chromatids that are separating from each other. And this is important because remember during anaphase 1, it was the homologous pairs that were separating. Now we're actually separating those sister chromatids, which we remember, unless crossing over has occurred, they're identical. But in this case, because crossing over has occurred, they're actually not identical, right? Remember that creates variation there. Okay, so anaphase 2, sister chromatids separate. Now telophase 2 and cytokinesis. Again, we've got the nuclear envelope reforming. We've got new cell membrane forming. Uh, remember that cleavage furrow in animal cells is what's going to sort of pinch those cells up apart from one another. And as you can see, this cell created 2, 
and this cell created two. So we now have a total of four gametes. And I'm just showing these as, as sperm, for example, here. And they each, remember, have three chromosomes. So remember, we started with six total chromosomes. That was 2N. That was diploid. Now each cell, each gamete, has three chromosomes, which is haploid. So you saw, start to finish, how we reduce that chromosome number down to three. And notice they're all different. This one is two blue and a red. This is two blue and a red, but the crossing over happened. Two red and a blue with crossing over, and two red and a blue. So all four are totally different. So every single sperm and every single egg that a human creates is genetically different from each other. That is amazing. That is the source of all the genetic variation. That's why you and your brothers and sisters don't look exactly alike, uh, but you do have some similarities, don't you? Okay, so let's summarize meiosis. We're producing gametes. We're producing that sperm and we're producing that egg in the sex organs of the ovaries and the testes. We're, remember, starting with the diploid cell that has 46 chromosomes and we're ending with the haploid cell that has 23. We're starting with one cell and we're ending with four cells. And remember that each of those four cells, each gamete, is different because of three reasons. We already talked about two of them. Well, they're different for two reasons. One, crossing over happens in prophase one, that exchange of material, and then at metaphase, the ind independent assortment. They can line up in any, any fashion. So all gametes that are produced are different from one another. So what happens next? We've got our egg, we've got our sperm. Well, remember back to that life cycle diagram, the egg and the sperm are going to fertilize one another, and so we're going to have N plus N equals 2N. And what happens after fertilization? It grows and it turns into a baby. Um, now, so this is the third source of variation in the human population, the idea that any sperm can fertilize any egg. And so this is called random fertilization. Again, another reason why uh, you and your siblings don't look exactly alike. Even on the off chance that a sperm and an egg were, were identical to each other, any sperm can fertilize any egg, which makes it infinitesimally rare that, right, that you are going to look exactly like your brother or your sister. So that will do it uh, for meiosis. Uh, hopefully you draw all those pictures you went through and you drew all those diagrams and you defined all of those words. And we're going to do some modeling of meiosis just like we did with mitosis uh, the next time we see each other in class.